In this screencast, we're going to work through an example of mass transfer via unimolecular diffusion. So the problem states that a student leaves a 5-liter beaker that is 1 foot high, containing 3 liters of ethyl ether on their lab bench open to the atmosphere. And we're in Boulder, Colorado, so the lab temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. Or assume that the ether evaporates through a stagnant layer of air in the beaker and is carried away once it reaches the top of the beaker. We want to determine the initial mass flow rate of ether from the beaker and the time for the ether to evaporate from the beaker. So the first place to start with uh, any problem, especially mass transfer problems, is to draw a picture of our system. We're going to assume a couple things to make this problem easier. One, that we have a steady state mass transfer, that the mole fraction of ether in the air, which we'll say is Ye, adjacent to the liquid surface here, can be determined using Ryolt's law. And at the surface of our container, we have some air carrying away this ether. So we're going to say that the mole fraction of ether at the surface of the container is just equal to zero. So we do have a cylinder and we can get an idea of what this stagnant layer thickness is based on the dimensions of the beaker. We know that 5,000 centimeters cubed, our 5 liters, is equal to our height of 1 foot, which converted to centimeters gives me 30.48 centimeters. This height times the cross-sectional area, pi r squared, allows us to determine that the radius is approximately 7.23 centimeters. So one thing we could also do is since the volume is 3 liters of a combined 5 liters total, we could say that our height must be 60% of our beaker height which gives us 18.29 centimeters. This also allows us to calculate the film thickness, which is the remaining height to the top of the surface, which I'm just going to say is delta Z, and I get 12.19 centimeters. What's important is that since we are diffusing ether through a stagnant layer of air, we're going to go ahead and use unimolecular diffusion and the appropriate flux equation, which I'm going to write down here. So we have our flux of ether in the z direction, the vertical direction, is equal to the concentration of our system times the diffusivity of ether and air. This is over our delta z, our film thickness. We have the mole fraction of ether at the surface of the fluid minus that at the top of the container. And this is all over the log mean of 1 minus the mole fraction of ether. We could calculate the concentration using ideal gas law. We're given the diffusivity of the pro in the problem statement. We can calculate the mole fraction using Raoult's law. We're told that this term is zero. We could calculate the log mean of one minus the mole fraction, and we just calculated what delta Z is. So we now know we could calculate our flux. So let's go ahead and work through that. So we're gonna start with calculating our concentration of our gas. This can be calculated using the ideal gas law. So concentration is the number of moles over our gas volume, which using the ideal gas law is equal to P over RT. So now plugging in values for this, we get the concentration is equal to 33.57 moles per meter cubed. We're going to want to work with centimeters. So in converting this, we get 3.357 times 10 to the minus 5 moles per centimeter cubed. We have the diffusivity and our distance already determined. So we want to determine the mole fraction of our ether at the surface. And to do that, we're going to use Raoult's law. Now Raoult's law says that the mole fraction of ether in the vapor phase times the pressure is equal to the mole fraction in the liquid phase times its saturation pressure. Since our solution is all ether, then the mole fraction is 1. And we could rewrite this as the following ratio. Plugging in the values that we know for the system, the mole fraction of ether at the surface is 0 0.855. So the last thing to calculate in our flux equation is this 1 minus ye, or the log mean of this. We write this out as 1 minus the 
concentration at the top of our film, which is 0, minus 1 minus our surface concentration, and then this is all over the natural log of this ratio. And we should get the following value. So now we can plug in all these values into our flux equation. And when I plug in all these values into our flux equation, we should get that the flux of ether in the z direction is equal to 5.045 times 10 to the minus 7 moles per centimeter squared second. Now that we've calculated the flux of ether, we could use this to determine what we were asked for in the problem statement, which was the mass flow rate of ether. So to go from a flux to a molar flow rate, and then a molar flow rate to a mass flow rate, we're going to start with our molar flow rate calculation. So this is our flux of ether in the z direction times our cross-sectional area in the z direction. And we're working with a cylindrical beaker. So our molar flow rate of ether is equal to 8.286 times 10 to the minus 5 moles per second. To go from a molar flow rate to a mass flow rate, we need to multiply it by the molecular weight of ether, which comes out to 6.14 times 10 to the minus 3 grams per second. Now the problem asks us to report it in kilograms per hour, so we need to multiply by 3600 seconds per hour and divide by 1000 grams per kilogram. This works out to 2.21 times 10 to the minus 2 kilograms per hour of ether evaporating away from this beaker. Just to give you an idea in terms of volume, that's about 32 milliliters per hour that would be leaving our beaker. So this answers the first part of our question. The second part of our question deals with how long it takes for the ether to evaporate. So you can imagine that as this fluid is evaporating from the beaker, this stagnant layer thickness is going to increase. Now we neglect the accumulation of ether and air in this new film space and so really this becomes something that we term a pseudo steady state case. So for the second part I'm using a pseudo steady state case because even though we know something's changing with time we're assuming that we have no accumulation and so therefore our flux for our ether is just what's leaving our system. And so we can also say that this flux must therefore equal a negative accumulation in the beaker itself. So not in the stagnant layer, but in the beaker if we're looking at the ether that's there. So really this is a disappearance. Going back to our flux, it's in a moles per area per time. So we want to know how many moles we have to start with. So our volume of ether, we can multiply that by the density of ether to get a mass. And if we take the mass and divide it by a molecular weight, we could get moles. So we're looking at a change in volume with time. And really the area is not changing, so we could point that out and say just the change in height, or in this case the change in z with time. And so given this, if we multiply this by our density and divide by our molecular weight of ether, then this gives us a molar flow rate. That divided by our area gives us our flux. And the nice thing about this flux is that we have a relationship for it already that we used before that look like the following. So the only thing I've changed here is that instead of z2 minus z1 we have z since that's changing and we have our mole fraction that we have constant at the surface of the fluid and constant at the top of the container. So as you see now if I just get rid of this term set these two equal to each other it's just a matter of plugging in the density, the molecular weight, our concentration, our diffusivity. We know delta y. We could calculate the log mean as we did before. So it's just a matter of evaluating the integral that we're going to look at. So let me write that out. Bringing our time component to its own side, set everything else on the other side, we get the density over the molecular weight times 1 minus y of ether, the log mean of that, over delta y. 
This is multiplied by 1 over the concentration times the diffusivity of ether and air. And then we're going to evaluate the integral from z naught to zt for z dz. Now, z naught in this case is where we started, which was a delta z, or a distance from the top of the surface of 12.192 centimeters, and the total height is 30.48 centimeters. So at some time, that will be our other z. So it's just a matter of plugging these in to the integral for our boundary conditions and solving for t. When I plug all this into our time equation, I get a time t equal to 6.1 times 10 to the fifth seconds, which equates to 169 hours, which is roughly one week. For the three liters of ether in this beaker to evaporate at 25 degrees Celsius, using the assumptions and techniques that we used in this video.